Welcome everyone to Prophecy USA, a Bible study podcast de designed to specifically unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. My name is Rick Pearson. And I'm Karen. Thanks for joining us, folks. And this is Karen Pearson. Thank you for joining us. Folks, we're going to do a, 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 a message tonight entitled Overcoming Demons, Devils, and Hateful Birds. Uh, but before we do that, I want to, I want Karen to read uh, an email that we just received from someone, and uh, I think you'll, you'll find it, um, that it'll bless you. This email is from Stephanie. S Stephanie wrote, hello, Rick and Karen. I'm writing to express how grateful I am for your powerful prophecy ministry. I watch your show on the PTL Network in California and listen to your Thursday podcast. No other ministry has captivated me more than Prophecy USA. Since the COVID scare, I have felt as though the United States has fallen under a dark cover. It now makes sense that the United States has turned its back against God, promoting CRT, a woke agenda, and attacking innocent children. The United States has become a reprobate nation promoting evil is good and good is evil. I thank God that my covenant with Jesus remains. As Christians, we sometimes sit on the sidelines, afraid to stand up for God's justice, because we're afraid our family and friends will stand against us. Since watching your show, I have decided that I will no longer sit on the sidelines, waiting for someone else to do the work, and I've decided to get involved. My first step was to order your book and study guide. After reading your book, I ordered 10 additional books and just started giving them away. I had a Holy Spirit moment to order your book and just randomly send them out to all ministries, denominations, including utilitarians, atheists, Scientology, government officials, etc., all over the United States. I have sent out over 100 books and study guides and will continue to mail them out. I also stopped robbing God and now give tithes faithfully, even though I am retired. Additionally, I give a percentage of my retirement income to different ministries and organizations. I have never felt so good about giving in my life, and it's amazing how I still have plenty. God is so good. My next plan of action is to get involved with the school board to protest against the attack by Satan against our children. It's unbelievable how this administration is financing and promoting this agenda. God have mercy on America. I accepted God as my savior when I was a teenager, but got lost along the way. I ended up having two abortions as a teen. As a teen, I was told it was not really a baby, but now I know that it was murder. For years, I thought God would not forgive me and I could never go to heaven. But I have learned now that God will forgive us if we repent. Praise God. I also had to learn to forgive myself. I now share all of my bad experiences and mishaps to help others. And I find that others relate better to you when you tell your story. We have to sometimes humiliate ourselves to help others. I recently heard a pastor on End Time Ministry report that there is no pre-tribulation because of Matthew 24, 29 to 31. But your teaching talks about the open door, pre-tribulation, and Revelation 3.8. If you get a moment, can you please help me understand these two passages? Again, I'm so grateful to have found your program. I have your app on my phone, and I'll be listening when I go on vacation to Europe. Sincerely, Stephanie. Stephanie, thank you so much. And Stephanie, we want, we want to let you know that we are definitely pre-tribulation rapture. And there's uh, the verse in Revelations 3.10 that says that God has specifically um, given us an open door for you have kept the word of my patience and because you have kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of trial that shall come upon the whole earth. And he says that I will give you an open door that no man can shut. Now, uh, Stephanie mentioned that no one else is teaching what we're teaching. The United States of America meets 53 descriptions of Babylon the Great. She is falling into darkness even as we speak, and this is what our message is tonight, is overcoming demons, devils, and hateful birds that have infiltrated the nation. Mm -hmm. But 
I want to guarantee you that there is a pre-tribulation rapture and it will only take place in Revelation 19, 1 through 7, mystery Babylon the Great must be destroyed before the marriage of the Lamb has come. Mm -hmm. Before the marriage of the Lamb, that, that seven-year marriage supper, where the, where the saints are raptured and they're in heaven at the feast because the bride hath made herself ready while the earth goes through the tribulation period, our goal is that each and every one of you will get yourself ready. And what was, it was Stephanie? Stephanie. Stephanie, God bless you <laughs> because you are doing exactly what I did. You would not be getting this message if I had not been convicted by the Holy Spirit in 1987 mm -hmm. and I gave 10% of my net worth to mission work mm -hmm. and that's when I received this revelation on America's role in Bible prophecy. And uh, God bless you. Now I, I'm going to make I'm going to make an offer to you to you folks tonight. Stephanie sent out 10 books, and then she said she sent out 100 books. Yes. If any of you folks want to do something, maybe you don't understand all the hithers and thithers of the Bible, but if you have 10 people that you would like us to send a book and a study guide to, the books sell at are 35 and the study guides are at uh, 20. 20. And so that's fifth. If you give, if you if you send us a donation of two hundred and fifty dollars, we will send a book and a study guide to anyone that you want. Ten people. If you feel that, if you feel led to do that, now I'm not here to make money, but if you have people that you think needs to hear this message, pastors, pe uh, 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 relatives sons, daughters, your church, we can send you 10 study guides and 10 books and you can give them out or we will send them directly to the people from Amazon and Karen can do that and it'll just come as a gift and they don't even know, have to know who it came from. But if you have 10 people, that's what we will do. $25 for both the book and the study guide. And I just feel led to do that. And, and we might have some people. And it's a way of witnessing. It's a way of sharing the word. Uh, I know even myself, we have friends and relatives that we can't even talk to. Can we, Karen? It's true. Brothers and sisters and relatives that we can't even talk to. They don't even want to talk about this. But if you send them a gift... It's amazing once they start going through the book, once a Holy Spirit starts speaking to somebody and they hear it, they just might gobble that book up and end up knowing more about the Bible than you do <laughs> or we do. But anyway, uh, if you want to do that, let us know. Um, how can they contact us? At Karen at prophecyusa.org? Yes. Karen at prophecyusa.org. Say you want the the uh the the 10 10 pack book, offer 10 pack offer for 250 dollars and and we will send that out uh shipping? to who we will do the shipping as well okay or we can ship everything to you and you can hand them out if you want to but that's just i just felt led to do that as i as i read that um, we have a, a roughly 1,500, 2,000 people now listening to our Bible study, and we have new people that are uh, working on our, our social media, and they're, I don't know what they're doing, they're putting tags and stuff, but anyway, we're, we're going to expand this, and we're also going on more television. Um, we've contacted some more TV stations. We are determined to get this message out aren't we well as the as the days get darker it seems more urgent to get the message out as the days get darker and when you see what's happening in the school systems 
folks, the darkness is here, it's coming, it's rising, but so is the light of the knowledge yes. of the gospel. And don't forget, just like Stephanie said, she'd had a couple abortions. Well, she found out that 2,000 years ago, she may be shed innocent blood, but I got good news for you. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, innocent blood was shed for you, and it doesn't matter how many abortions you had or what you've done. If you will confess it to Jesus, he is more than able to, to forgive you to cleanse you of all unrighteousness and to put you in a preferred position with our Heavenly Father who wants above all things that you have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, that's And so you know, true. part of that abundant life is sharing the good news with other people and watching how it changes people's lives. That's very true, Rick. Isn't that true? It is. So um, tonight's broadcast... Uh, Basically, we talk about the United States of America and, and, and in the last four weeks, uh, we've talked so much about the World Economic Forum, the New World Order, uh, the Trudeau government and how uh, they're following the World Economic Forum and how you can see all these things happening. And it's very interesting because people on the news Glenn Beck, uh, different people are talking about the Great Tucker Reset Carlson, now. Tucker Carlson. Ben Levin. Everybody is getting in line with what we said a year ago in this book. Mm -hmm. Folks, it's happening. The wheat and the chaff are separating. Those who don't want God and want a new world order are pushing hard with the critical race theory, um, the new digital currency that's coming in Canada and in the U.S. It's all forming what the Bible predicted is coming. Science and technology has caught up with Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. We don't know when. Nobody knows the day or the hour. But folks, things are happening very quickly. And... Uh, you know, the Bible says that the wise man and the prudent man foresees the evil and he hides himself. And this program and this teaching is to help you hide yourself. Especially tonight, we're going to talk about overcoming demons, devils, and what was the other hateful thing? Hateful birds. And hateful birds. Um, we just recently had, uh, I listened to Candace Owens. Uh, on, on and Tucker Carlson, and they were talking about the food shortage that's coming, mm -hmm. the World Economic Forum, and uh, Biden's talking about a food short, shortage that's coming, and uh, a technical COVID, a technical virus that just may come. And we're just going to listen for one second, two minutes, to Candace Owens, and then we're going to be right back. Uh, Candace Owens is paralleling with our book. I don't know if she's read it, but I'm going to send her a copy uh, of our book. Mm -hmm. Because those who don't teach Bible prophecy on television are actually teaching Bible prophecy. And they're <laughs> paralleling what we've been saying. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of exciting. It so is. right now I want you to listen to Candace Owens for about two minutes, and then we'll be right back power grid down and by they i mean if the government purposefully brought the power grid down and i'm not asking that question for fun i'm asking that question because the world economic forum um is predicting that a cyber pandemic you can look this up they've been running exercises about it this year um is inevitable you're probably saying what is a cyber pandemic it doesn't make any sense like you know what are, what are we even talking about well first of all the reason i'm even paying attention to the world economic forum and their exercises is because they notoriously in 2019 ran an exercise for a coronavirus pandemic that oddly all became true i mean without one slight difference they said that uh the coronavirus was going to escape from a wet market in south america of course when the coronavirus uh swept the nation uh, swept the world in 2020 they said that it escaped from a wet market in china you can still look that up by the way that's not a conspiracy theory um that 
Uh, they simulated that coronavirus pandemic. It was the World Economic Forum in collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in collaboration with John Hopkins University. And um, the website is still up and they say, you know, a, the coronavirus pandemic is inevitable. And then boom, it happened the very next year. So uh, people say it's a conspiracy theory to believe that they knew that the coronavirus pandemic was going to happen. You don't have to believe it was a conspiracy theory or you can believe it wasn't a conspiracy theory. It's up to you. I don't really care. The point is, is that they made the prediction, they called it inevitable, and then it happened immediately. So for me personally, that signals to me that I should probably pay attention the next time the World Economic Forum makes a prediction and calls it inevitable. And lo and behold, they are predicting that a coronavirus pandemic, uh, a cyber pandemic, pardon, is going to happen and that it is once again inevitable. So if you look into the exercise that they have run this year, I believe they run it in July. Um, they've been meeting and talking about the cyber pandemic, what it will look like. Essentially, uh, their idea is that they're going to have to sanitize the internet uh, because a bug, think of this as like a coronavirus for your computer, um, is going to sweep globally. And the only way they're gonna be able to stop this bug from infecting everything is to effectively shut down the internet, right? And they were talking about bringing down the power grid in an effort to do this. So imagine the government bringing down the power grid and you would not have access to anything um, that required an electrical charge. You know, Candace Owens said a lot of things about the new world order, uh, about the technical problems that, that their for forecasting could be coming. Um, Tucker Carlson recently reported about the uh, possible food crisis that's coming. And we've had 17 uh, food, processing, food plants. processing plants. Two got hit by airplanes. We've had some burn. Explosions, Explosions, fires. fires. And it's funny how all this stuff is happening and we're coming up to the fall elections. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be interesting if all of a sudden we had a national emergency, kind of like Justin Trudeau, when the truckers came and honked their horns, he declared a, a national emergency and he froze people's bank accounts and he made that and he would not even talk to the truckers. Mm -hmm. Folks, this is... Uh, Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, never let a tragedy go to waste, never let an emergency go to waste, mm -hmm. never let a crisis go to waste. Mm -hmm. Always use it for your agenda, which is exactly what the World Economic Forum said about COVID-19. We are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand what the World Economic Forum is doing, the New World Order, agenda, the United Nations, the G7, the G20. It's all about control, folks. Mm -hmm. Now, Elon Musk just bought Twitter, and everyone who is liberal has a total meltdown over someone who wants free speech. <laughs> and the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. Now, when Jesus walked on the earth, the Bible says in Luke 4, 41, when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto Jesus. And he laid his hands on every one of them, and he healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Yes. Now the demons knew who Jesus was, but Jesus also knew who they were. Mm. Now what does this have to do with Bible prophecy? When those spirits came out of people in Jesus' time, where do you think they went to? The Bible doesn't say that Jesus sent them to hell. They said, have you come to torment us before our time? Folks, those spirits are still here. And Jesus taught in Matthew 12, 43, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walks through dry places. 
seeking rest and findeth none. Then he says, I will return unto my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. Mm -hmm. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. Now something I want to say is, when you come to Christ and you ask Jesus into your heart, no demon has power to cross the bloodline. Your house is no longer empty. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. But those spirits still have the ability to create thoughts and attitudes within you if you're willing to listen to them. Mm -hmm. So, what does this have to do with our current end times? Uh, especially those who believe that we're dwelling in mystery Babylon the Great? Well, the Bible tells us in Revelation 18.2 that this great nation that's a golden cup in the hand of the Lord would fall into darkness. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation 18.2 it says, Babylon the Great has fallen, has fallen, and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Do you understand why people are so angry because we may have free speech again on Twitter? <laughs> Do you understand why people get so angry today and they call you a racist and a bigot and they accuse you of everything that they are? Folks, this is part of the darkness. Now, many times I've described a demon spirit as a thought, an attitude, or an opinion that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. So now let's just quickly look at the history of where these spirits come from. Remember, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, the secret things belong to God, but the things he reveals unto us belong to us and to our children. The prophets walked deep into the spirit realm. They had the veil of their eyes taken off and they saw angels, they saw demons, and they taught things in scripture that are for us today. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah was one of those prophets. Now, we are still having the veil pulled off of our eyes. One of the greatest veils to be pulled off is to understand the mystery of who Babylon the Great is. Yes. The 53 descriptions of Babylon do not point to a little city in Italy. It points to a great population center, the richest, most powerful nation in the, in the earth, a nation who controls the seven continents of the earth, who's a golden cup in the hand of the Lord, raised up in covenant, and who fills that cup with the shedding of innocent blood. Yes. This is the United States of America, folks. The blood is filled in that cup, the innocent blood, and it is going to be poured out in judgment on the nation. It's all in Scripture. But how did all this happen? Where did, where did these foul, demonic, unclean spirits come from? There are two kingdoms that are presently at war on this planet. And it's important to understand the origin of Satan's kingdom. Now, God's kingdom has existed forever, but Satan's kingdom had a starting point. And to find this starting point, we must look at several passages of Scripture that gives us a general concept of the origin of Satan and his kingdom. First, you go to Ezekiel 28, and he talks about Satan, Lucifer, and he says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. 
the stardust, sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire. He names all of these jewels that, that Lucifer's body was made of. And then he says, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou, wert, thou was created. You were the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. And you were upon the holy mountain of God, and you walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, and you were perfect in all thy ways from the day that you were created. And by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Because your heart was lifted up, because of your beauty, and thou hast corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. Mm. I will cast thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Now Lucifer was created with musical pipes and instruments in him. He was the anointed cherub. The anointing means the Spirit of God would come upon him. That ruach, that wind, the anointing of God, the breath of God would come upon him. The music would start coming out of him. And then the glory of God would shine and he would reflect God's glory. Mm. And he was the, he was the um, archangel of worship. But he started looking at himself, mm. looking at the anointing, and iniquity was birthed in him because he said, I will be like God. Yes. Now, um, He is described as a dazzling, you know, bright and shining uh, spirit mm -hmm. because he carried God's glory. Now, there are, there, are, there are three archangels in Scripture. One is Gabriel, who carried the word. Michael is a warring angel. Yeah. He is the angel over Israel. But based on the description of Lucifer's body, he was by far the most beautiful of all the angels. And according to Webster's Dictionary, the word Lucifer means light-bearing. He was covered in all these jewels and created musical instruments, and he was the worship leader. Now, it's interesting that just as Babylon has fallen and become the habitation of every foul and unclean spirit, Lucifer fell as well. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah described Lucifer's fall from the kingdom of light because of his pride. It got the best of him, and he wanted to set up his own kingdom. Does that sound familiar today? Mm -hmm. He wanted a kingdom without God. Mm -hmm. He wanted a kingdom where he could control everything. He didn't have to live under God's conscience. He didn't have to live under God's commandments. This is the same thing that happens at the end of days mm. when these spirits rise up and it's their last kick at the can to have their own kingdom. And God's going to give them their kingdom for about seven years. Mm -hmm. But Isaiah says, How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Now this is in Isaiah uh, 14, 12 through 15. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will send into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high God. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Do you know it says that Lucifer will, really, was, will actually shake kingdoms and he will make the world as a wilderness, and he will destroy the cities thereof. And that's happening right now in Ukraine, but it's going to happen even more during the tribulation period. Yes. And it's really going to happen 
the first day of the tribulation is going to happen right here in North America. Mm -hmm. When the judgment comes down on America, God's going to release him. These folks that are rebelling right now with a critical rage theory and wanting to put down America, they hate America's covenant with God. They hate the Judeo-Christian these are thoughts, attitudes, and opinions that have made their way inside people and they don't want God. And they're filled with hatred. It says, Thou shalt, uh, Babylon shall become a habitation of every devil, every demon, and every hateful bird. Mm -hmm. When Lucifer nosedived into infamy, he lost not only his glorious form, but he lost his good name. And as mentioned previously, Lucifer means light-bearing, but he would no longer reflect the glory of God. Never again would his brilliance cause heaven to glisten. No more beautiful notes would come or be heard from his anointed pipes because they were stripped. His body was stripped away. His name was changed to Satan, which means adversary, or one who opposes another. And from the first day of his insurrection until now, Satan has opposed all that is good and anyone who is a part of the kingdom of God. So Satan had one problem after his mutiny. He was stripped of his divinely designed form. Neither he nor his fallen angels or the demons had a body through which to express themselves. And that is why Jesus said in Matthew 12 that demons constantly go about seeking rest. Right. They seek rest by finding a place in which to dwell. And since the highest creation of God made on the planet Earth is man, it is man that he can find the highest form of expression. Spirits from the kingdom of darkness constantly try to find rest in human beings. They need a body through which they can manifest and manipulate God's creation. Now, this is something that's very interesting, Karen. But the infamous serial killer, Ted Bundy, gave an interview with Dr. Uh, James Dobson shortly after his execution, or shortly before <laughs> his execution, right. James Dobson went in and interviewed him. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Bundy said he wanted to warn others of the dangers involved in yielding to lustful thoughts. And Bundy began his journey into the spirit realm simply by occasionally enjoying pornography. This is what he said. Mm -hmm. And he soon became a prisoner to strange desires. And as his need increased, he began to seek greater satisfaction. His curiosity drove him to read materials with sexual acts involving violence. Remember every hateful bird. Right. Finally, he became bored with simply looking at pictures and at videos. Mm -hmm. He literally wanted to do it. Yes. It took years of process of watching, of listening, of being programmed. And finally those things took over. And Bundy was driven to become involved in the violence he had seen. So soon the urge overcame him and he began to choose victims to violate sexually. And in the interview, Bundy stated that he could not explain the incredible rush of emotions he would feel as he literally choked the life out of his victims. Now let's look back at some examples of God's kingdom rising up and demonstrating his power to overcome Satan. I don't want anyone being nervous about this. If you are born again, you have already overcome. Yes. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart. The Holy Spirit comes into you and now you just need to hear God's voice and walk in obedience with Him. Love, joy, peace, kindness. And these things have no power over you unless you let them. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that Lucifer was one of the three archangels who were under the direct command of God. Of course, the other two were Michael and Gabriel. Now, Michael's the angel of warfare, while Gabriel is a messenger of the word. So since the kingdom of God is within every born-again believer, we are God's army of flesh and blood on the, on the planet. That makes sense. Our job is to overcome evil. But God's kingdom has more than just an army. He also has an air force. Only one-third of the angels fell. Two-thirds are still with God. And we're on the majority side. <laughs> That's good. The word angel means messenger. And throughout scripture, we can see accounts of angels who came to men through dreams, visions, visitations, or uh, celestial beings, or disguised as men. Angels came as messengers to Lot and told him to leave Sodom and Gomorrah because it was going to be destroyed by fire. Right. Angels brought messages to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Gideon, Samson's parents, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel also received visitations. Mm -hmm. And in the New Testament, Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds were told of the Messiah's birth through the message carried by angels. So angels are the messengers of God's kingdom. They deliver, they deliver a direct word from God. But angels do not preach the gospel. That is our job. Right. They're here to assist us. Uh, the book of Hebrews said that angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto those who shall be heirs of salvation. That's in Hebrews 1.4. 114 or 14? 114. Okay. I stand corrected. 114. Now, Jesus said in Luke that if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the angels. At the very moment that you join God's army, Jesus Christ makes the announcement in heaven. Immediately, your name is written in the book of remembrance. The angels are informed and they rejoice because another sinner has come to repentance. And in Psalms 34, 7, David confirms the presence of this air force. He says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivers them. Mm. So there are demonic forces around us, but for every demon, there's two angels. Mm. I like those odds. I like those odds too. <laughs> <laughs> and we already know that angels come to give men messages concerning the kingdom of God and his purposes. Now, sometimes angels will come with good news. Uh, the announcement of the Messiah. That was good news to the shepherds. But other times they come to pronounce an impending judgment, warning God's people to prepare to be delivered from that judgment. This is what happened to me in 1986. Yes. I had a visitation. Now Lot was warned, warned to flee Sodom and Gomorrah before those cities were judged by fire. Similarly, Joseph was warned to flee Egypt with the baby Jesus when Herod was on a rampage and ordered the killing of Hebrew children under two years of age. Mm -hmm. Now, do you wonder what's influencing Putin mm. to kill, steal, and destroy? Thoughts, attitudes, and opinions that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. But those same spirits are all over the world. Mm -hmm. We are sacrificing more children on a daily basis than what Putin is doing. So I'm not, I'm not pointing my finger at one or the other. But I'm saying that we're in, we are heading towards judgment, folks. Mm. Now, David said that God shall give, him, give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And the fact that there are angels does not guarantee they will always protect every man and every woman. Angels are under direct authority from heaven. 
They can do nothing without heaven's approval. When men or women are acting under the command of their Father in heaven, as soldiers in the army, they have access to the aid of angels. I have had friends come to me to pray for their children, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I release the angels to go forth and do warfare on their behalf based on this woman's prayer and her relationship with God in covenant to go and bring those kids back. Mm -hmm. You can pray that prayer, folks. Now, many times we see angels depicted as little blonde-haired cherubs <laughs> floating in the atmosphere with harps and wings. But the angels of Scripture are nothing like that. When an angel came to Joshua, excuse me, we had a little technical problem. When the angels came to Joshua, uh, the Bible says that he had a sword in his hand, a flaming sword. In Joshua 5, 13 through 15, it records that Joshua came to Jericho, he lifted up his eyes, and he saw there a warrior standing with his sword drawn apparently ready for battle. Now, the man told Joshua that he was the captain of the host of the Lord. And Joshua immediately took off his shoes as the angelic being had instructed him, and he recognized that he was standing on holy ground. Mm. The angels were involved when the Israelites came into the promised land. Yes, Something caused the walls of Jericho to fall down. Joshua was instructed by the Lord to carry the Ark of the Covenant around the city walls for seven days and blow trumpets of ram's horns. On the seventh day, the walls fell, and in the invisible realm of the spirit world, the angels moved on God's behalf, and they were following the exact instructions of the kingdom of God. Those walls fell. Now, maybe it was an earthquake, but we were there, and they said the walls did not topple this way or that way. The walls literally went straight, straight into down. the ground. Yes. That's how they fell. 500 years later, Elisha's servant had his eyes opened by the Lord, and he too saw the warring spirits of God's kingdom. Elisha and his servant were surrounded by the army of Syria. The servant was quite upset, so Elisha prayed for the Lord to let him see into the invisible realm of the spirit world. Immediately, the servant's eyes were opened, and he said, Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Mm -hmm. You know, there are 108 references recorded in the Old Testament where angels appeared to men and 165 in the New Testament. They came for the purpose of delivering a message or they appeared in the midst of battle. So in Gideon's case, he was talking to what he thought was a man. And the angel told him he had been chosen by God to deliver Israel from their enemies, the Midianites. After delivering the message to Gideon, the angel disappeared. And in Judges 6.22, it says that Gideon thought he would die because he saw the angel of the Lord. <laughs> Ninety years later, Samson's parents also fell on their faces as an angel revealed truth to them. Their son Samson would be used by God to deliver the nation from the oppression of the Philistines. And everyone in Scripture who encountered an angel was left with a holy and reverent fear of the invisible powers that existed in their midst. Mm -hmm. The presence and manifestation of God's air force does not always reveal itself openly. When Moses was leading the children of Israel in Exodus 13, 21, the angel of the Lord came before them as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Mm -hmm. When Moses stood before the Red Sea, he was crying out to the Lord for help. And the Lord said, Why are you crying unto me, Moses? Lift up thy rod, stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. 
And as Moses responded to the Father's command, the Bible describes how a wind came from the east and drove the waters back. Yes. What was that wind? It was the Spirit of God, but the angels are also from the Spirit of God. They're made of the same substance we are when God breathed His Spirit into man. Mm -hmm. And they're all around us. Mm. Now, wind in the Bible is often used as a sign of God's air force manifesting their presence. And in Exodus 15, 8, God split the Red Sea with the blast or breath of his nostrils. But when Elijah was translated to heaven, he went up in a whirlwind from God. In 580 B.C., now this is very interesting. Uh, this is the Jerusalem Bible. In 580 B.C., King Nebuchadnezzar cast three Hebrew boys into a fiery furnace because they would not worship the golden image. The New Jerusalem Bible records this event in the book of Daniel, and this is what it says. The angel of the Lord came into the furnace beside Azariah and his companions. He drove the flames of the fire outward and fanned into them. In the heart of the furnace, a coolness such as wind and dew will bring, so that the fire did not touch them or cause them any pain or distress. It was after this miracle that the king decreed, How great are God's signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. You know, is it any wonder that on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples were gathered together with one accord, the Bible says there came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind, and that wind or that breath of God is called pneuma in Greek. Had they been seeing with spiritual eyes, they probably would have seen chariots of fire as the warring spirits of God's kingdom fought back the forces of darkness. A path was cleared, for the arrival of the Holy Spirit, and he was coming to dwell and empower the hearts of man. So folks, as you see this darkness coming, don't be discouraged. We know it's supposed to come. He's, he's Lucifer, Satan, and his demons are going one more time they're going to try and rule and reign and control. They're liars. They're weak. They're nothing compared to the love of God that he has for us. Mm. So don't be afraid when you see this. In these end times, there are spiritual entities from the kingdom of darkness that are on assignment to come against the commandments of God. And these spirits seek to control individuals, families, cities, states, and even nations in opposition to God's kingdom. They attempt to dominate man by putting thoughts into his mind that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. Now in a book, Spiritual Warfare for Every Christian, uh, Dr. Dean Sherman describes the kingdom of darkness as a well-oiled machine. And this is what he says in that book. Satan has particular battle plans for each geographical region and for each group of people. Like any general, Satan's plans to rule the earth have begun with good maps. He sees the world in segments. He sees empires, nations, regions, cities, precincts, and neighborhoods. Mm. Isn't it interesting that the global revolution of 1991, which is the blueprint for the World Economic Forum and the UN 2030 agenda, describes dividing the planet into 10 geographical regions. Isn't that interesting? And Dr. Sherman says this is how these spirits work, and he's been years in the deliverance ministry. And those 10 geographical regions are to create global governance, mm. total control. Mm. Isn't it interesting that every protocol to control the sustainability of the planet goes against every Judeo-Christian moral protocol? They're calling for prostitution, abortion, homosexuality, pandemics, plagues, and the like will help us sustain the planet's ability to feed the world. 
by keeping the population down. Mm. Now, isn't it interesting that John, in Revelation 17, foretold Revelation 17, 12, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, ten men, ten kingdoms, where spirits are operating through, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast, who's the Antichrist, and they'll have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, that's you and me. Right. They're making war right now. But the Lamb shall overcome, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God and of Satan are about to battle again. And we can expect to see incredible signs and wonders. God's kingdom that takes dominion from generation to generation will rise up in the church. And we will release the word necessary for God's air force to manifest their power and do battle on our behalf. Now, folks, this is out of my book that I wrote in 1999 called Babylon oh, Rising, and we're rewriting it right now. It's going to come out in October. But as Satan's kingdom rises up, like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard that the enemy cannot defeat. And those in Satan's kingdom will knowingly or unknowingly call on their demons believing them some to be reincarnated spirits or whatever the new age terminology is, spirit guides or whatever, masters of wisdom, but they will be the same old spirits that God's Air Force fought for Moses, Joshua, Elijah, Elisha, and all the generals in God's army. Mm -hmm. So folks, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. And when people speak nasty to you, when you walk into a room and you can tell they don't like you, there's something inside of them that doesn't like what's inside of you. Because we're walking in a spirit realm. And you can choose you this day who you will serve. If you ask Christ in your heart, you can become kind, gentle, walk in peace. You can look at people and look past their faults and see their needs. That's we good. don't have to walk with a, in, in a battle of words screaming at one another. We can walk in love and joy and peace, but we don't have to put up with one thing that the enemy comes against us with. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a difference in turning another cheek and laying down your life for somebody to help them than to being a doormat and letting people walk all over you. Right. I once heard somebody in business say uh, to me, you know, sometimes customers get, get pretty nasty if, they, if things don't go their way. And he said, well, have you learned to bark back yet? And I said, what do you mean? He says, when people get at you, you just bark back and they settle right down. <laughs> you know, the enemy is a coward. Mm. The devil is a coward and he will, he will walk all over you if he can. Right. But you have to realize greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And you were called to be above and overcome. So you don't need to be intimidated by loud mouth, lying, corrupt people who are bullies. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So we are at our 52 minutes right now. And this has been a message entitled Overcoming Demons, Devils, and what was the third one? Hateful birds. And every hateful bird. There's a lot of hateful birds out there right now. And they're rising up. And they don't want you to speak. They don't want God's word. They don't want to hear anything about the Bible or the Ten Commandments. Well, guess what? They're going to hear it anyway. <laughs> and someday, God's going to say, enough 
is enough. A trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ will rise. And we will be changed. He will judge Babylon the Great. And he will hand the planet over to principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And folks, you don't want to be here when that happens. And neither do we. Do we, Karen? <laughs> no, we don't. So right now, we're going to pray for you. And, and I just want to remind you, if you feel led to send our book or our study guide to people that you love or you want them to know, let us know. Um, just email Karen at prophecyusa.org dot org, and we will send out the 10, ten sets to you directly. $25 a set for the book and the study guide. Um, let's do, um, we'll do, f yeah, let's do 10. We have to do 10 because I can't afford the to do less than that. Um, but anyway, and, and also, when we send those out, we'll make sure that they know to download the free app and they can get all this teaching for free in the palm of their hand. So that's just something I felt led to do today and, uh, and we'll do that. And, and uh, if you want to be like Stephanie and win souls and let people know what's happening in our great nation, uh, both in Canada and the U.S., Folks, we're on top of it. You know what's going on, and so do we. And the Bible has made it abundantly clear that we win. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just pray right now. Father, I just pray for each and every person listening right now. I just pray that you would bless them, that you would put your spirit upon them, that you would release your angels even now in their houses, around their families, in every area of their life. That the ministering spirits of God, the angels that excel in strength, that do His commandments, hearkening to the voice of His word, would cover us, that your Holy Spirit would rise up inside each and every one of us, and that your peace would come upon us, that you, you would shine your face upon us, and, and that in every area of our life, that your grace and your love would manifest the life of Jesus into all those who are around us. Folks, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Folks, we thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Bible Study Podcast, Prophecy USA. My name is Rick Pearson, and this is... Karen Pearson, thank you. Karen Pearson, and we're reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people realize. We'll see you next week. Shalom. Bye.